So this is my first. Breaking the Zoom cherry. How does it feel? I don't know. I'm a bit nervous to my ankles. My ankle, my, my ankle's kind of twinging, so I think I'm nervous. Have you started on the cakes then? Did we start or? I have no cakes. Ah. The first one that we did, Chloe was like very organized and was like, make sure you have a cake. So I like brought a French, French fancy home or something like that. And then did we have cakes for Val McDermott? I can't remember, but yeah. I think Today, you did. All I, have is, is I think you did. I watched that one. Cookies. Hi. They're very small. <laughs> and they're bought at a supermarket and not at our bakery. Well, don't eat all your up bun before we mm -mm. start. <laughs> Remember that one you uh, Ben made me for my fiftieth? Was it like a giant one? Oh, was it giant? It was massive. And did it work? Like, was it? Yeah. Was that yeah. rock bun? Was it in the shape of a fifty? No, it was the zero of a fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I think the five, the five was stretching it, even for Ben's skills. So, welcome Kenny to Cake Hi. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. Hi. <coughs> Thanks for having me. You have just told us this is your first ever Zoom, so welcome. Yeah. welcome. You have to, uh, am I too close? Is that, oh, I am, look, my head's massive, but I can't see properly. Uh, we'll have a like this. <laughs> what's the etiquette? What's the etiquette here? Do we all have to match head size? I don't know. Like there we go. Like, so Chloe, you need to come in a bit. Okay. We've had a couple of work meetings where Dad's been on, and like, because there was four of us, it looks like Dad stood up once, and it looked like his body was attached to my head, which is quite entertaining. Yeah. We manage that. We'd have to log someone else in. <laughs> There's like a certain sort of time, I guess it must have been March or April last year when suddenly everything in the every meeting went to Zoom. And so there's like, you know, maybe a month period on my phone where there's like a lot of photos of the screen where like things that seemed really funny at the time, like someone standing up and their body being attached. There was the Zoom meeting where Ben ran away because a seagull had flown into his house. And then instead of getting the seagull out, he just came back to get his laptop so he could like take it with him to show us the seagull inside his house. This is the stuff you're missing by not being yeah. in the world of Zoom. <laughs> what have you done for the whole of lockdown? Well, I actually hear real stories about real seagulls. In real life. Well, Der Derek Wood, uh, the painter and decorator in Crail, just this week, uh, mentioned how they had to sack a job off completely because they were getting dive bombed by seagulls. And then I heard from Beth of a um, a seagull dive bong bombing a couple that were sitting um, at the central outside eating, like mm -hmm. a proper. It must have been more than one seagull because Beth reckons they got hit about 15 times. <laughs> so it was so bad that the central offered them a free cake and coffee and they got to sort of use the bathrooms in private to just try and get some of it off. <laughs> they were, it was in her handbag, hair and all the drinks. And each time they came back from the bathroom, they'd, they'd see it somewhere else. They, it was, yeah. Like a, it was like a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> the missing a trick, they, they should have the pipe band competitions like now when the seagulls are all nesting and got <laughs> chicks. And they could have the seagulls dive bomb and then just get the pipes going like, so it's like. Eddie, this could be your next mu uh, Mercury Music Prize. Well, my next one, I haven't had one yet. <laughs> Nominated, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I say. This could, be the, this could be the next time you lose the Mercury. I think that is the first and only time I've seen you in a suit. Nah, come on. I was in a Kaylee band for years. I don't I don't remember me being in a suit. And I also don't know if I've ever been to a Kaylee where you've played, just your dad and your brother, but 
I'm sure I've danced. I'm sure I've danced to you playing Kaylee music, but like I've got a really good story about one suit jacket that my dad got made, where for some reason, best best left to him, he decided he'd uh, like adjust his posture <laughs> just for the the fitting, right? So my dad never stands like shoulders back and. You know he's he's got the like I've got the accordion drooped shoulders, but for this one time he basically and then got measured, and then of course when he got the jacket, it it didn't ever sit right. It was like he was like pinned back by the shoulders constantly. So um, I inherited that jacket, and yeah, it was kind of weird. It felt really like oh, what's wrong with this jacket? It's the right size, but it's so tight on the until you really push your shoulders back, head out. And it's the comf- it's the most comfy jacket. So you've got to be careful. So if you are going to get a suit measure, don't do anything silly like tuck it the other way or you know. <laughs> Fantastic advice. <laughs> well, just <laughs> this is I tell you something, something's changed with these rock buns because I don't know, it's maybe an extra bit of cinnamon or I mean, I am a connoisseur of the rock band, as you know. Yeah, yeah. In fact, without me, very few people in the St. Andrews area would have tasted these rock buns because they used to always used to make about two a day and they were always sold before 10 a.m. Yeah, well, I was gonna I was gonna ask you if you remembered that vividly. Sorry, you could tell yeah. us. Well, back when Ben liked music. <laughs> So Ben is Ben is our older brother who uh, the the three of us uh, run the run the bakery. We have another brother, uh, Ronan, who um, he's kind of an action he's an action guy, isn't he? Really, he's, he's, he's an action kinda, guy. Yeah, he's, um, the, he's the crocodile Dundee of Fisher and Donaldsons, I would say. Yeah, <laughs> Ben's Ben's a bit more of a sort of the scientist guy. Are you just are you just recalling that uh, fence Halloween party where Ben dressed up as? Yeah. Scientist, but just yeah, because he because he was like, "What am I going to dress up as? I'm a baker. I have a white coat." <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, and it's bitten, um, so... it's, it's bitten him in the ass now because that's what I think of him as a scientist. Um, anyway, when we had the fence shop, he would come in. It took me a while to work out who he was, and I'm quite cheeky, as you know. I just said, "Here, you. Why is it when we get our lunch break and go round to Fisher and Donaldson's, you never have any rock buns?" It's my favourite. Every time I go around, oh, we sold out. And that's one of the guys that sounded like that. <laughs> oh, we've sold out. Every day we've sold out. So I said, well, how many do you make? So I asked that to Ben. I was like, how many do you make? Because how many people like me go in for a rock bun to be told they're sold out? He's like, good question. So he went away and got on to your uncle at the time and just said, look, how many of these are we making? Because we're not, we're probably not selling way more than we sell because you're not, you're not making enough. And then production was ramped up to the point when I went round, even mid afternoon, there was still a rock bun to be had. So thank you, Kenny. Yeah. From the, from the, <laughs> from the entirety of St Andrews because yeah. without you we would not know how great these rock buns are. The entirety of St Andrews or the, maybe the one other person that would go yeah. in the afternoon. Looking maybe there was a lot them. maybe there was a lot thrown out for a while. I, maybe, the, maybe the pigs are more thankful. Yeah yeah yeah. I think but it's so. a point it's a fine line isn't it because you you kind of it's like when I make um CDs at home or CDRs, the, the best scenario is to only have one person not be able to get it, only one. You've only lost one sale, but the person who doesn't get it is the biggest advert for the thing that the, everyone else bar them got. So that's what you have to work out. So you never want 10 people not getting a rock bun. You only want one, you only want me. Because then I go out going, how oh, these rock buns are amazing. They must be amazing because there's, there's never any left. What you don't want is to have three left at the end of the day because that goes against the last three that you sold. 
do you, do you get where I'm at? Yeah. So, and if you just get it exactly right, nobody's talking about them. It's like an invisible product because everybody that wanted one got one. And the thing that probably made me want a rock one more than anything else is because you didn't have them. <laughs> Are you now arguing for us to stop doing them? No, no, you have to do them, <laughs> but you have to work out. It's like, let's, let's use maths because I'm a maths guy. X is the number of people who want a rock bun. So you make X minus one. And that's it. And just that's do that for all our products. This is like an ongoing issue because of lockdown restrictions, people holding at home. It's like the num like it's impossible to predict. Yeah. I've got I've I've got a theory about why certain people are successful. Now from the outside, it's like they were lucky. You know, the people that always won on that, bought that just at the right time sold their car just when it was about to go pear-shaped. Mm. I reckon that they live slightly in the future. Their timeline is just slightly ahead. So if Ben, the scientist, could work out how to live his life one only one day in the future, he would know how many the day before wanted something. So he'd be able to make the right amount, because he knows. It's an excellent point. We'll, we'll make a note of that. Jade, have you frozen or? Have, oh no! Oh, you're, oh wow! That was weird. Oh, what happened? What happened? I don't know. Did I freeze? Oh, it says my internet connection is unstable, but that might be yours. Moving. This is going to be a joy for you. All the little quirks of Zoom. Well, yeah, Jade. I thought you just. I don't know what happened. I thought you were doing you, a really good staring. Daddy, look. Daddy. Daddy, look. So how did you get into rock buns? Because I think it's a very niche. B3. How did I get into rock buns? Well, I'm quite fussy. I'm very suspicious of things that look fancy. And I, so I know that I like uh, these. I never get this right. Are these raisins or sultanas? Or neither. I actually don't know. I don't know. I don't like let's either. Call, so I, I've never. Let's call them fun. raisins, right? I know I like raisins. So if I see something that's got like raisins in, great. But if I see something that's got like raisins and other colours in, I'm a little bit like, ooh. So I know I like cinnamon. I know I like um, bready stuff. The colour. So it was a no brainer. There's nothing, there's nothing in a rock bun that I will be freaked out by. Let's put it that way. And have you ever tried any of our other items or did you just stop when you got to rock bun? And what was that? I've tried very few. I've seen like, you eat a spinach roll. I know, but you see the thing that puts me off spinach rolls. Well, the thing that got me into them was that when they had ricotta in there. Yeah. But now that there's no ricotta, I'm actually, I'm not a fan of spinach. It's too slimy. A couple of years ago, we we thought, I wonder if we could just take, because all it was was there was a bit of cheese in them and there was a bit of um, egg to sort of bind the spinach. But apart from that, there was no, uh, like apart from that, they would have been suitable for vegans. So we tried them without the cheese and without the egg and we felt that they were still... Stringy. You felt they were too... Green and stringy. I don't know if the ch I don't know if the ricotta would have made them not stringy though. Perhaps they don't get like cut up as much. Maybe maybe the spinach used to kind of get. I do kind of now you mention it, I do kind of remember the 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 spinach almost used to be chopped. Mm -hmm. and it has to be like spinach has to be like sort of parsley or something. That's it has to be granular. Once <laughs> one <laughs> once you get into the could be seaweed in there. Could be anything. Some people would love that, I bet you. Superfood. Maybe we should do a little vintage batch for you one day and reintroduce some cheese for you. Get mm -hmm. the cheese, right. whack it back in there, chop up the spinach. Excellent. Special. <laughs> I feel like I've already, the thing is, I feel like I've already, you know, with the rock buns thing, I feel like that's it for me. I got you to make more rock buns. It, 
it's kind of wrong. Think of all the people that haven't managed to get you to change your, this is how we do this, and you will not. I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> we only make these things and we make them this way. I don't know what accent that is, sorry. I'm it was probably... almost Terminator. It's good, right. It's, <laughs> it's my Arnie accent. But I feel like somehow just just through, it's like not what you know, it's who you know, and Ben was in the shop. If it hadn't been Ben, there would never have been more rock, rock bands, ever. Yeah. Because I would have been told, like, who are you? Are you? Have you ever baked anything in your life? I'll say, well, yes, I have, actually. I tried to make an apricot bannock from a tea time recipe book, and it was like soap <laughs> when it came out. It was the greasiest kind of, I don't know what went wrong with that because I followed it to the letter and it was horrific. But I'm, I'm tight, you know, I had to pick all the apricot bits back. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine you baking. What? I can't imagine you doing a lot of baking. Have you seen the fridge magnet with, um, like, can I just uh, go off and get you this fridge magnet? Mm -hmm. I think, like, I'll not be long, I know exactly where it is. Just hold that thought. <laughs> now, the pit, it's gone a bit weird, but see if you could. Oh my goodness, is that you and Jen? Yeah. That's at the bakery. That is at the bakery, what does it say? It says, magnets, how do they work? <laughs> What's the story behind this? You get, you click children's TV presenters or something. <laughs> yeah. I think that might have been the time that Found made their chocolate record. Oh, when they did the gig there. Yeah. Right, oh, yeah. So, um, I don't know what Jen, I don't know why, did, was there a video made or something? I can't, yeah, I can't. they did the, um, was it the video for Machine Age Dancing? That was it. And they I think we got, we were, because obviously the, your bakers are are not fo photogenic like, like those two. Why Maybe, is Jen's yeah. hat looks weird, like? Ben looks like Liza Minnelli. Look, a magician or something. Look at that. It's like it's Liza Minnelli. A wizard or something. Yeah. Those those and people I, come flat pack. So I yeah. assume Jen hasn't sort of. What's on you, Kenny? Or is that just marks on the magnet? Yeah, I'd like to say that that's like some dough mixture, but I think the. Can you say the badge has gotten rusty? I think so. Yeah. Good. So what baking did you do that day then? <laughs> Just rustled up some... We definitely yeah. made butteries that day because Kev yeah. from found from Aberdeen and he was yeah. really... And we definitely made potato scones because Tommy, I think Tommy Perman either had never had a potato scone or loved potato scones. I love potato, potato scones. scones. Toasted with butter and peanut butter. Mm. Oh. But um, no, once Ben showed me those huge tubs of glass, glassy cherries and sultanas, and oh, I was just, I was just, in, I was just in and out, in and out of them. It wasn't until you mentioned uh, the reason that you like rock buns that reminded me: is it um, bats in the attic that you say is white flour in my diet that will be the death of me? <laughs> it's well, it's actually white flour and sugar, and sugar in my yeah. diet. But the take that uh, John wanted to use didn't have me saying and sugar it just I, I must have run out of breath but it was the it was the best song. it was the best song one and he was like you don't need the sugar nobody needs sugar he said so officially people if I now sing it the right way which is and, and sugar, sugar in my diet people go oh you got it wrong you got your own song wrong <laughs> I actually I remember I remember you playing it like watching one of your shows and you and you saying and sugar and I remember thinking like oh it's one of your like you know you've added a little bit you know I just revert to type 
But now I know that if I run out of air, I don't have to say and sugar. It's a hard word to sing. There's too many S's at the front. One. And too many R's at the end. Um, I, see, I vaguely remember you saying when you were when you were making that album about how, because you, you, you would maybe sing it a little bit different every time and John Hopkins getting really annoyed and was like, made you write the words down and, you, and said like, you know, it has to be the same every time. Well, he also, because <laughs> he's pitch perfect, he would say, oh, like, so on that last take, you went up to an F sharp and then came down to the E. And I go, ah, can you do that again? <laughs> I'll go, uh, what did I go up to? <laughs> I, I tried to sound smart. You sure I didn't go up to the G? <laughs> and he goes, no, F sharp, I'm pitch perfect. I go, right, and I could never do it. And then it got so bad that I was so concentrated on one thing that everything else was a mess. And he had to give up. He's like, right, you cannot sing the same line twice, <laughs> can you? I was like, no, I can't. I cannot. Yeah, I can believe it. I remember like sort of one of my only ever experiences of trying to record a song where I remember when um, Johnny Common was, was trying to record um, I'll be back and he got really excited and he wanted the Milne siblings to do backing vocals on it I think because we we played a couple of songs at home game or something like at you know as a sort of a bit of a laugh so he was like thinking oh you guys can all sing like I'll come so he, he came to uh, Ben's house this little cottage in the country and it was I remember it was so cold we were all standing in this spare room like with coats on Johnny said I was microphones and stuff and we must have been there for like two hours and we would be like and all you had to sing was I'll be back and that was it and we just kept doing it and Johnny just after about an hour he was just like I don't understand what's going on like when I turn the microphone microphone off you guys can all sing and when I turn the microphone on you all just suddenly sing out of tune and it sounds terrible <laughs> I felt so bad for him because we were all trying so hard and just getting worse and worse and worse I feel like the Ramilnes, so like, yeah, back during like home games and stuff, we occasionally apple tarts. Oh, nice. We did gigs. I feel like we were only destined for people to witness it when they were under the influence. Yeah. And it's it was never meant to be recorded. I think it shouldn't have been recorded. Bad. Yeah. It's a shame it was recorded. But it was I fun think. at the time. Yeah. See, one, one of my bugbears is, um, uh, live gigs that have that are be, that are recorded. Um, that live gigs were never meant to be poured over again and again and again and again and again. They're in the everyone's in that instant and instant rolls forward, and everybody leaves with a sort of fragmented. But overall, that was pretty good. But once you start isolating and going, oh, what? Whoa, what happened there? Whoa, back. Whoa, whoa, whoa completely ruins it but it's two different disciplines make like to record a song and then to perform a song that's two very different things and um yeah as soon as i'm aware of the little flashing light it, cha it changes instantly where you are in your head and with what you're doing now there's uh oh the pressure oh got to watch what i say um now i was i was going to go for one but i'm not going to do it now because that's the one thing that will be the youtube you know so it should be banned are you really missing live gigs mm -mm. no nope. for recording music to playing it live mm. hmm no I, I do quite enjoy I love the live part, like when we've started and the bit between the starting and the ending. But what I don't enjoy, and I haven't for many years, is the all the hours that go into getting to that point. So um, at some point, the hassle of doing it has overridden like the enjoyment. And then when that starts to happen, the enjoyment has to go up and up. And you, and you feel it with a band on tour. Like if, if the gigs aren't getting progressively better, 
it becomes a problem. See, I, I ruined it for myself because in 2017, you know, the, the giant rock bun that I got at the start of my 51st year, but I just turned 50. I took that year out just to play in the East Newt Hotel. Mm -hmm. So I worked out that the number of hours playing music as a ratio of traveling and setting up and going through receipts and hassling a band and like and all that the ratio was basically the reciprocal of what it is normally where the hassle and the receipts and the accounting and the arguing with a manager and the and the getting on with the manager hi Derek um <laughs> is massive and the actual time that you spend playing music is this fractional it's no different playing a festival set in the heat or in some crazy place somewhere in the world is no different. Once you're plugged in and looking out the way and in your head, it's the same thing as taking my guitar from my house, walking 25 seconds and plugging in in the East Newark Hotel. So because I did that for a year, like those 50 gigs, I really... I can't go back. So um, I did the 50 gigs and then in 2018, I did very little in terms of um, like festivals or uh, next to nothing. But then by the end of 2019, no, by the end of 2018, the offer was in for us to do the From Scotland With Love shows in 2020. So basically there was this sort of no fly zone imposed on me doing anything because they needed to focus uh, all my kudos and energy and all of my um, audience on these big gigs, which were massive for us. I mean, the Usher Hall in Edinburgh. Um, so that, yeah, I didn't do anything in 2019. And then we did the shows last year and then this happened. And, um, I, and I really struggled, I think, with those live gigs. Um, we were at the Edinburgh gig and it's, it felt weird being there because it was so close to like the world locking down. Like it did, yeah. it felt like, should we be here? But it was packed, like it was packed. Absolutely packed. We talked about this all through that week, you could imagine. Yeah. Um, so not only was that room packed and all the successive rooms, I mean, we did a gig after Bojo announced no gigs. We did our Manchester gig. Um, purely because the venue was owned by an American company. And they went, yeah, you're playing the gig. <laughs> So, um, and the, the audience was decimated in the true literal sense of there was meant to be nearly a thousand people and there wasn't quite a hundred. Wow. Um, and then we drove up empty motorways and like all that. But anyway, over that week, not only were the gigs packed, but the, we were on a sleeper bus. So we're all sleeping like less than a foot away. Um, everyone was still going out in the pubs. Remember back then it was only sing happy birthday when you wash your hands. Um, yeah, it was, like, it was really surreal, I would say, to be, and the people around us, like my manager was like, when we did the London show, he's like, guys, you're the, like, you're the last band standing. And not only that, but he really had a real sense of what was going to happen and how it was all going to unfold. And um, we were all of a mind that like, this is, this is the end of an era. And weirdly, we're the, this band that played one extra show beyond, beyond everybody else. We did the one extra gig. <laughs> Just get quite kind of weirdly fitting in my weird chaotic kind of shambolic life. Well, you do, like, I remember um, being in London and, uh, that was after you'd broken your uh, your ankle on the at the boatyard, and it's just like made you real makes you realize like the commitment you have like you don't have the choice to let down however many hundred people every night for however many weeks and um, I think you played do you remember that well you must remember it because you're yeah. in well see I could I I could have cancelled. Hmm. Like, so he, this is kind of how it works. I don't think I'm spoiling any trade secrets, but if you cancel outright ahead of a tour like that, 
then you are responsible for backlash, whether that's financial, fans. But if you try it and have to back out, having tried it, that's a very different um, scenario in terms mm -hmm. of what the disappointment in people. So Rob Chalice basically went, look, just try it. You just have to try it. And if it's not, and the first gig was like, um, we had to fly to Shetland. And I even came a cropper, like, so crutches, I mean, I hadn't done it for that long, right? And I had the big boot and and I got the big boot early. I got the cast off and the big boot on because I did have oh, these yeah. gigs, right? So I shouldn't have really had that boot on. And the, so Andy and I get to Glasgow airport to go to the Shetland and we get to the, the up escalator. I'm like, oh, I can't mess this up. Do the crutches go on first? And then, oh, wait a minute though. Do I swing on to there? But what if the crutches go back? Oh, wait a minute. And the queue's building. People are like, come on. And Andy's like, look, can we just go? Can we do? I was like, eh, uh, crutches or foot? I'll go crutches. So I went crutches and of course, whoop. And Andy caught me like by the shirt neck. So I went all the way up the escalator with him. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> and just flaffed off the top. What a start. <laughs> and he, so there was another weird thing on that tour. So we played in Winchester and I was like, oh no, look at this place. So it was a stage and there was steps up either side of the stage. And there was no other way onto the stage than through the crowd and up the steps. And I'm thinking like, I mean, I've, I've turned up at gigs, like pulled by the AA, I've got no shame, but this thing of crutches and, you know, like not quite getting on the stage, that's going to put a real, <laughs> put a real moment on the night. If I take a, you know, like a header, just trying to get there and all of that. Right. So it was packed. And I'm already panicking. And he's like, look, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll, we'll work it out. And, you know, so anyway, when we're going into the venue and Andy's like, um, excuse me, excuse me. And folk were like, who's this? Like, you know, oh, as usual, somebody thinks just because they've got a pair of crutches that they should be able to go to the front, you know, a bit, a bit kind of like, oh, and people, are, God, you know, and it took us ages to get through. People just were not having it until they realized who the cripple was, right? So I did, I, did, <laughs> I did get up on the stage, but the whole set was me thinking about how am I gonna get out with all these people? And you know, I, I knew by this point how long I could go before the ankle was like properly distracting, right? So my, my mind was just the whole gig worried about you know, like, it's like the end, oh, you, you spend your whole summer holidays worried about going back to school, that kind of thing, right? But at the end of the gig, it was like the parting of the Red Sea. Because people now knew who it was and they were just... <whistles> and me and Andy just kind of went down through the middle of the hallway. <laughs> All right, cheers. I was like, it was different when I came in though, eh? <laughs> Yeah, that, that was uh, that was an interesting three weeks. So, can you even imagine doing a tour again, or are you are you remaining in Fife for the rest of your days? Um, I sort of can, but I can't see how it could be done on the way that it used to be done. Um, so I think I think that was the end of a chapter. <laughs> and have you not been tempted to do any like online? Gigs. I feel like that would suit you. So you wouldn't even need to leave your house. If you well, they sound, they sound terrible though. And um, I'd rather like, so we've been doing a, a Kenny Drew and I, we've been doing um, a sort of a Patreon kind of version of the jam nights that we'd just gotten started before this calamity. Just to keep this idea that we're, we're doing something. And so we have done like videos, but we film them, film them ahead of time. And I make sure the recordings are um, as good as I could get them. And then we match, you know, so it's kind of live, not live. Um, if I feel like I can't mime to a recording, 
but it's meant to look live, I'll just like put a mask on or something. Everyone wears masks. No, I'll put on a comedy mask or um, or we blur the, the footage and all. So I'm not averse to like some something going out like online, but I'd like to at least know that it sounded right. Yeah. Um, I didn't make any clangers. Like I probably made a whole load of clangers in this video that somebody will be insulted or offended by. <laughs> But you know, I'm I'm a classic. I just um on on stage because of nerves, because of then nerves becoming showing off. I just bleh, I say anything. And it all <laughs> but Lisa, Lisa for so long, she made a very similar sort of point about these when you do a live gig, it's supposed as you say, it's supposed to just be a one-off live thing for the people in the yeah. room. It gets no. really like, yeah. It's like don't take notes. So there's been a few times in Crail, folk are like, Kenny, and I go, well, what? Ah, are you uh, King Creasel? And I kind of usually go, my stock answer now is, um, I used to be. <laughs> That's how I feel. I was like, yeah, that I used to do that, yeah. All right. And then, then they're kind of a bit, oh, so you won't be doing much then, eh? I'm like, no, no. I'm doing a lot. I'm actually doing a lot, but that life of um, all the, and it's not even the playing, because like I said, the playing bit was a tiny bit of it. Like we never rehearsed as a band or all the things that people think you do in a band, like you take a year off to write. <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> the press, or you just get taken to this this hotel suite and all these journalists who are like, no, no, no. So the reality of being in a band is very different. And the reality of being in my band is really different because we never rehearse. It's all off the cuff. Uh, let's just see what happens. But the amount of the good stuff, like I've said this already, and the stuff that I'd rather not do, that's why I haven't really missed it. But um, I feel like if I don't try something soon, <laughs> I might, I'm, I'll probably never go back. I'll probably just go, no, nah, that was that. I, Right now, my ideal job would be driving a combine. That's, I was, I was saying to Beth about, I kind of wish I'd gone agricultural college now. Have you driven a combine before? No, I had to go of, when I was really young, I had to go of a tractor because my granddad was um, uh, like a plowman, a mm -hmm. shepherd. And he let me, and I was really young. I mean, this is back in the day when you could, remember you, well, you'd probably, uh, even too young but when I was young I got to sit sort of on my dad's knee and steer his car <laughs> like not on a drive to Glasgow or something but you know that was a thing you just hop over you steer it's like that steer for a little bit then you'd be like right you know we're coming to the west port I better drive us through the west port kind of thing me so, and Kenny bumped into each other on the beach and discussed how we would start our own little fife sort of island yeah commune so you may be the now is the time to get into farming because that skill would be handy yeah you will need my we will my agricultural skills i was actually going to ask if you if you uh if you hadn't if you hadn't gone into music what would you have done because i wondered if you might have done uh, hairdressing after you showed a real talent for it when you cut chloe's <laughs> chloe's hair <laughs> Yeah, I've only given a few haircuts. Chloe, you got a good one. Yeah. Uh, Andy got an absolute belter. He got like a Wilfred Owen, like a World War One. And do you remember um, Hannah Handana from the Withered Hand Band? Uh huh. And she had that like long, long brown hair. Uh, she ended up like with a tennis ball. <laughs> Was it a good look? But I do cut my own hair. Can you tell? I mean, I've even been putting grey in it to soften the shock when it turns grey. I've been adding a little bit of... Little highlights. Yeah. So, um, no, I wouldn't have been a hairdresser, but I, I, did, I did want to go to art college because I realised in sixth year at Madras that I'd done all the wrong things. What did like you I'd do? Kind of, well, I'd been led by the nose a bit, and because I was good at, you know, like maths and... Uh, physics and I just kind of went along with it and then when I, I did get into I got an unconditional from Edinburgh so my sixth year was just a real this is me now learning how to not concentrate ever again 
in a lecture. And um, but I did art. I did all the subjects I kind of wanted to do, but was talked out of because oh, you'll never get a job. If... So um, I did actually go to the careers. Was it a career service or something? Or yeah. anyway, I went. I went to somebody. and said, "Look, I, I've made a mistake. Um, I think I'd like to go to art school." And they went, "It's too late." I was like, "Yeah, but I, this year I got like an I got an A in my O grade art." He's like, "No, but you needed to have done that, you know, when you were sixteen and not eighteen. Too late." And I was like, "Oh, all right." And I just took them at their word and went, "Oh well, oh well, that's that." So, had I had my time again, I would have gone to art school. I don't know if I'd be any good, and I probably would have still done music, because that's kind of all I did at Edinburgh Uni anyway was. Um, recorded songs and oops you know I was shocked at how um how much like university was like a continuation of school and that you'd entered just the next phase in some sort of agenda mm -hmm. you know like so when I went uh, to talk about what courses would I do um I was basically told that well it's for you Kenny it's either engineering um accountancy um law or medicine because that's what the country needs <laughs> i just and i'm just like daft enough to go what there's all wow there's only four choices wow at least there's four <laughs> <laughs> it's not about you Kenny. i know and so what happened after so you finished uni and then yeah. how long till you opened your shop in st andrews oh so i finished uh, uni in 89 and and I went busking for two years and then there was the Scooby-Doo's took up the next uh however many years and then that little blip with Cartoon Heroes and then more Scooby-Doo's and then McKaylee Band sort of came next in about uh 97 or 98 or thereabouts and so we took and I worked. I started working part time in Jason's shop while he was running it. I think in '98, and then over '99, uh, I think that's when we took it over. No, uh, that's when we started to talk about taking it over because the guy that owned the shop, it was getting to the end of his lease, and he wanted to go off and do something else. Or, so he was going to have us run it. He obviously saw the writing on the wall and knew that CDs were soon going to become something nobody wanted. But then. Um, and then we opened, I think it was the spring of 2000, and we ran a year and a quarter. And then that's when uh, basically the rent and rates in St. Andrews took that massive hike when the Royals, the Royal, um, and then all those 400 Americans wanting on his course and suddenly rent and rates, they just took a massive hike up to the point we just couldn't do it. Two of us could not work in that shop, even as it was. We were on a pretty low wage. And I had the Kaylee band and we had to just bail out. And that's that. And does it feel like a lifetime ago? Uh, yeah. I mean, well, there's Beth who was a, like a toddler, you know, daddy coming into that shop and that's her 22, you know, and a young lady. Mm. How were your cakes? Have you finished them? I have. I ate one rock bun and I ate one apple tart. And they are the best. I mean, apple, they are the best apple tarts. I know they're small. We could argue till the cows come home that they, sh they could be. Am I allowed to mention other bakers? Not really. A, yeah, you know, of the, course. You know the ones that begin with B. And after, <laughs> but their apple tarts are just like, it's the same cases as they do. Oh, the, the, the mince pies mm -hmm. you know, so it's like that size um they don't have the glaze on it i mean the glaze is brilliant um and yeah but they're they're like they're a meal in themselves and the pastry i mean everything's different about them <laughs> what am i saying but no these the, these little ones there's something about them that it's maybe just that glaze like what is that that sort of stuff on the top that like the stuff that the wasps love in August. Yeah, it's just a, it's just, just a glaze. But what is it? What is a glaze? Just basically 
sugary water, <laughs> but with a lot more sugar than water. <laughs> and less flour. Yeah. And then, no, that's, uh, yeah. Finally enough, the, the rhubarb tarts, though, we sell a lot more rhubarb tarts than apple tarts, which I find. What? Quite, yeah, I find it a bit unusual because, like, in, in general, apple is a more popular flavor, but. It took me a long time to get my head around the rhubarb tart, but I do like them. But I would always choose apple. Yeah. Is rhubarb not a vegetable? It is, I think. Probably. It's like it's like purple celery or something. Yeah. Yeah. We've seen you in your white coat and hat. What have you got any Kenny baking specials that you would bake? Obviously not at what was it, apricot. Um, so when when Beth was like five or six, five, six, seven, um, she had a, a pal at a Crail Primary School uh, called Myrta and um, her uh, mum and dad were Dutch. So he taught me how to, well, he called them Dutch apples, but it's not really, it probably isn't a Dutch thing, but he, <laughs> he sort of appropriated it and says, this is how we make Dutch apples. So you basically you get a cooking apple and you have to get um, the, uh, is, uh, the puff pastry. A cooking apple, it's dead simple, and you core it and then you obviously get the skin off and then you just pack uh, the hole that you made. No, no, you put the, get the pastry flattened out. You get that milked and whatever you have to do with that. And then you put the apple on top of the pastry and then you just fill the hole with... Um, Brown sugar, uh, probably most of what's in a rock bun. Brown sugar, uh, cinnamon, and well, raisins and sultanas. And you just stuff that all in. And then you seal up uh, the apple with the pastry and you put it in the oven. And then when the pastry goes, you know, and browns, that's it ready. And it's the most delicious thing. It's just apple, cinnamon, sugar. But the heat in there, you know, obviously makes the uh, the sort of the sugar caramelize and mm. all of that. And uh, so I'm, I'm pretty good at making them. I've only had one explode. You have to put good, give it a good uh, air hole, <laughs> or uh, bang. I've had one explode, but I've made I've made a few of them. But no, my uh, my forte is the macaroni cheese. Of course. So, um, yeah. I've, I've concentrated on that. Although I do, I do um, quite good soups. What are your thoughts on a macaroni cheese pie? Do you agree or not agree? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Just want to check that. But again, the, the B word from Anstruther, they do the bigger, mm -hmm. uh, so there's, there's just more of it and it just comes out. And you know, the, um, the ha well, there's a few places do it, but the East Sands, uh, uh, not Harbour Cafe, the other one, at the Yacht Club. You know that little kiosk? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they do a macaroni cheese toasty. Yeah. But it's not a sealed one. It's just toasted bread, and it's kind of like, they should call it a sandwich. But it's it's quite spectacular. Yeah. And then that little place on South Street, where the fence shop was. Um, Canny Soul. Yeah, Canny yeah. Soul. They do one as well. A macaroni mm -hmm. cheese toasty, and you think that's too much carbs, and it kind of is, because you, <laughs> when you have one, like, you're slightly in the future or something. There's something weird about how you, you walk in the shop, in the here and now, and you, you have one of these macaroni cheese toasties, and it's like your time frame goes a bit odd. It's not like you leave the shop before you went in or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a definite sense that you've something's altered with so much carbs and you, you know it could even just be um, you think you parked your car the last time you were in St Andrews you think that's where it is <laughs> so you go <laughs> you go head along and somebody's nicked my car <laughs> and then you realize no no they haven't they haven't I just had too much carbs I know exactly where my car is you think it's just in Scotland that you can get mac and cheese surrounded in other carbs? I hope so. We've got to have something that's, that's around. We've got to have something. Never too many carbs. Nah. Yellow foods. Just that's all you need. Chips on the side. 
Um, I feel obligated to say though that um, our macaroni pies are big now. Are they? Yeah. All right. That was a tobacco felt, intervention. Right. Because I always felt that these little macaroni pies, if they get slightly overcooked, they're quite right. like, and they're. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I imagine if they're slightly bigger, you, there's a more leeway. Is that right? The bigger the thing, the more you've got. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'd say that's my pie of choice at the moment. Do you put, um, are they peppery? Are your ones quite peppery? No. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, That's, sorry. You've got to get a little bit of pepper. And see, probably... I'm not a pepper fan, so they're that like I will not let. I will not let. Oh, I see. I will so not let the kids. Because you don't like influence. pepper, none of yeah. us are. Uh, I get it. I get it. What if you turn? What if you decide I don't like rock buns? What then? Is that it? They've disappeared. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Quite a lot of our decisions well, are based on would we eat it. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? The, we've got these fudge donuts. They shouldn't have brown icing. <laughs> Suddenly, oh! <laughs> how do you how do you know that Et loves rock buns? Don't know. Yeah. Well, it looks like he does. What? <laughs> <laughs> is, this the, is this the worst Zoom meeting ever? I'm quite enjoying it. I don't know if this is it is okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're okay, meant to do. This I is. You, yeah, I don't know what you meant to do. I feel I feel a bit like this guy. <laughs> That's excellent. Oh no. That, no, guess where all the crumbs have gone. <laughs> That's the work computer. It's okay. I'm just uh, watch. <laughs> That's it. But is there anything else you want to like? Is there any upcoming projects and stuff like well i'm still I, I still record i've done probably more recording in the last year and a bit um maybe not songs but i've done lots of electronic music and this that and other but i always thought that playing live was like the kind of the shop window and even if you never play a song off of a new recording you could always reference it and you know i, I was kind of i'm, I'm quite self-deprecating so I, I somehow managed to slag off everything I've done but in a way that weirdly appeals to somebody <laughs> so I, I've got all this this backlog of stuff and I just think uh, I've kind of got a few new songs I just kind of like to try them and there's um, so we're halfway uh, Des Lawson and I we're halfway through recording the sort of the last record for Domino it's the last of my the batch and it probably will be the last I can't see you know I mean, I'm nearly thirty. I'm 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 at the I'm at the end of you know the rock the rock life the sort of shelf life. I'm pushing thirty. But again, when what's the point in releasing any record if you can't play live? We're not. I'm way beyond having sort of an internet presence that's going to sell a record. So I've kind of got to play live. To remind my audience that you can actually hear me for free on Spotify. Um, that's just the the, the general fug. That <laughs> so I've got that happening, right? But there are songs on it. It's eight songs. It's not eight noodling kind of whatever else I'm doing. And I feel like when that lands, I'm probably if I can play them. Well, put it this way, if the record is going to come out, I'm going to have to be playing them live. There won't be any record if I'm not. But if the record comes out, I will have to play them live. And I'm just thinking, you need to, you need to gear up here, son, because, you know, I've, I'm in a wormhole of, what, did I ever play live? It's like a reset. <laughs> it's like, this is it. I'm the reluctant front man in a one-man show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happened. <laughs> so I know. So I've got um, I've got these songs that are they're not new, but well, they they were written before all this guff. They're like say I'd say I wrote them in 2017 and 18, so they're not really. I haven't been able to write a song. Well, I've done a couple, but I don't want to I don't want to comment on any of this nonsense going on right now. So 
it's going to be weird to hark back to a me that didn't have any knowledge of this um, in songs and hope that they're, I don't know, are they relevant? Is anything that happened before March, is any of it relevant? I'm asking you that. Is it relevant? I think I think it is. I think people are craving content of any kind that isn't just that, you know, like films and and music and books to remind to remind us what life was like before. Because I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm sort of trying to think of things that have happened in the last couple of years, I find it really hard to I find it really hard to scale that. Like, did that happen two months ago or did that happen 18 months ago? Because it was like COVID times is just one big blob. And then there yes. was life before that. It's Groundhog Day. Mm. So, um, yeah, so I've got a record. I am still trying to be King Crizo in some way. So relax, people. Um, but whatever um, superhuman suit or cape I wore as King Crizo, I've got a feeling it's going to be Kenny Anderson standing there, which I've tried to avoid. Like, I wasn't Kenny Anderson singing in a band since the Scooby-Doo's broke up, put it that way. In 96, I stopped being Kenny Anderson in a band. It was, it was too... Like, I couldn't be me in a band. I'm, I'm not that guy. So, uh, Alter Ego. And then the Alter Ego was a, was a kind of recording Alter Ego for a long time. And I had to learn how to be somebody different or how to be a front man. You have to learn that. You, I had to learn it. It did not come natural. And, and maybe I'm not even that good at it. But when I'm King Crizo, I'm not sweating about, you know, phone bills and did I, did I lock that door? And, you know, what if we get stopped on the way home? And, you know, all the Kenny Anderson. <laughs> but I just have a feeling I've forgotten how to do that. I've forgotten how to be the guy that could stand up there and be like an idiot or be serious or I don't know. I don't know what I did. I've forgotten. <laughs> So I've got this, I've got this awful feeling that people are going to come to see a Ken Crizo gig and go, oh, who's this guy? This is like Kenny Anderson. We don't like him that much. <laughs> he's, the guy, he's the guy that goes on about there not being too many rock buns and not enough cheese and, you know, spinach rolls. So uh, I'm quite weirdly nervous about being me in that situation, not about what I play or not. I, can't, I don't actually care if I'm any good or not anymore. I'm more, this this other thing has crept in. It's me. It'd be almost like I might as well just stand there on the buff. That's how I'm going to feel like that. I'm just going to be all like, oh, I just can't. I have to escape me to to do that job. And you know, people would would ask about, oh, what like what are you thinking about when you sing or what? Ask me about details of a gig that we just played. I have no memory of it because to do it right, I've got to just forget it's me altogether. And just concentrate on whatever it is my vocal cords do to produce that noise. Like that's as close as I can describe what what that is. And then you're not in space and in time or in. It's like I don't know. The worst thought you can have in any gig for me is you're doing this now. <laughs> it's you doing it. So you but you know right now it's you. You know the you that you've lived with all that time. That you it's you. <laughs> that's when it goes that's when it goes completely wrong you have to just it's not me of course it's not me it's this King Crizo thing this ephemeral other thing whatever he that is <laughs> so um yeah that's that sound a bit insane maybe no I, th I think no more insane than everyone else has gone okay that's good because it's not I mean Playing songs is none. I'm not. That's not a stressful job, or like. But uh, I don't know to put myself back in it. And the other thing I'm slightly worried about as well is that I don't enjoy it. Mm. I think I'm more um, ob obsessed now by what is my alternate life going to be, you know, without music or without playing gigs, because that's all I've trained for. It's like I'm I'm actually at retirement. Year. I should be getting my I should be giving myself my own long service medal for having done this for like 32 years man and boy well more 36 so um yeah that's good huh 
But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know. We'll have to have you back for another rock bum. Yeah. See what's happened. Or or because you you you're gonna have to with all the shortages and all, you're gonna have to start growing all your own baking materials from scratch. One of those materials has got to be some kind of a grain. I'm thinking like wheat or yeah. barley, maybe oats. And you're going to have to have somebody driving that combine. So you get training and we'll see you on the farm. Yeah. Cheers. <laughs> so what happens now? How do you I don't just hit anything. the button? I'll just say thanks. Um, Oh, th well, thank you for having me on the... You're not actually broadcasting any of that last bit, are you? We'll probably edit it down, Kenny. Uh, that, so did I just, like, sync? <laughs> yeah, that would be great if you could just... A bit further. Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye! <laughs> Encore! <laughs> Right. Is he just lying on the floor? <laughs> I need some water. Right. Yeah. Thanks, girls. Thanks. Nice Remember, Remember, cut that right down to the, the gold. Twelve there's probably twelve good minutes in that, okay? Yeah. How'd right. I switch how'd I get out of here?